Hello and welcome to another installment of Ask JP, hosted by your favorite technology salesperson, JP, and our infamous network wizard and CTO for Matrix Networks, Jeremy Ness. Say hello, Jer. Hello, right. everyone. This is where we field questions about technology and networking from our ravenous fan base. Yes, we have a fan base. Let's hop right into the questions, Jer. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. First question comes from Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic wants to know why he's in jail and not Carol Baskin. Well, Joe, I think the uh, docu-series there explains everything you need to know. And if you don't know why you're not in jail, you probably deserve to be in jail. My guess is that Carol Baskin's not far from behind you, but I do want to say I'm a big fan of both of you. All right. Oh, looks like you asked a second question. Much appreciated. What is the difference between SSL and TLS? Before I answer that question, Jer, when I hear acronyms, it always brings up memories of something totally separate. SSL was a fabrication company where I grew up and as a kid I had a BMX bike and all I wanted for that BMX bike were pegs. SSL fabricated pegs for that BMX bike. So I worked all summer at a radish and onion farm, Siri farm, picking radishes and onions all summer long at a buck 25 a crate. Finally saved up enough to get pegs for that bike. Fast forward a week, I was just cruising around my, my own yard. I decided to bust down to the river to do a little steelhead fishing. I'm bombing down the hill. I've got my pole. I've got my tackle box. That peg catches a root. Next thing you know, I'm ass over tea kettle into blackberry bushes, totally scratched up. Probably one of the worst like bike injuries I ever had. So needless to say, not a huge fan of SSL fabrications. Probably should be a fan of SSL and TLS as it relates to technology. I couldn't tell you much, but I can guarantee you that one of those S's has something to do with security. I'm pretty sure it's internet related. There's two of them. So I'm going with one of them's better than the other. And without a doubt, there's gonna be some other LS down the road or SL or something like that. Let's go with GSL. <laughs> Did I nail it? Oh man, I think we just stopped there. I think we're, we're done. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as I always need to uh, ask you, what does SSL and TLS stand for? Well, uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm positive security's in there. Uh, I, I'm always a fan of L for layer, uh, you know, uh, and T's are good for trucking. <laughs> uh, SSL would be our secure socket layer, and TLS would be transport layer security, and those are generally rolled under the umbrella of HTTP. S, so the S is gonna denote one of those with the HTTP, of course, being Hypertext Transport Protocol, secure. So uh, SSL was actually invented by a little browser company called Netscape, uh, all the way back in the mid 90s. Uh, they were the dominant browser in the very early internet. And um, you know, as uh, e-commerce shopping and then logins started happening, kind of like, hey, we should probably encrypt some of these and not just send them plain text you know, in the clear uh, across the wire. So. Uh, Netscape uh, started SSL, um, and version one was never actually released. Then uh, version two was kind of the first public uh, release. However, uh, it was pretty broken out of the gate, or at least it became pretty obvious quickly. I mean, this was a brand new technology, so uh, for a little kind of quick uh, change of things, SSL 3 came out. Uh, beyond that, um, then there was just more of a name change. It's superficial. There's a few features, but... That's how we got TLS 1. So TLS 1 is essentially the same as SSL, uh, with TLS being transport layer security. Okay, so, why, do, why do we need this? Again, uh, as we are jamming our credit card, you know, uh, credit card numbers on a website, as we're logging in a website, as we're transferring medical data, banking data, uh, you know, as was, um, came out in the Snowden revelations that, you know, the government was mass tapping. And in general, anything you send in clear text, you know, in the clear or across anybody's, you know, network, are able to, to capture that and store it. So uh, what that does is that adds just another layer um, to um, you know the layer four protocols to kind of you know secure things in terms of encrypting. So uh, there's a certificate key pair. It's a public key, private key. Uh, the server gives out its public key. Um, you know the the client then encrypts everything going on the server, and it can decrypt with the private key. So uh, a lot of encryption there, but th that's really the end goal here is to uh, keep that traffic from prying eyes, um, so-called a man in the middle, right? 
Uh, if you and I send something clear text across a wire, someone in the middle should be able to, you know, can record that if that sends in the clear. So if I'm in a business and I want to make sure that I, I actually want to maybe see this traffic for some sort of reason, can I do that? Then you would purposely do a man in the middle. So a feature of most UTM, Unified Threat Management Firewalls, it's going to be a feature called SSL man in the middle. Uh, again, we're all on TLS now, right? TLS 1.3 just came out. Uh, however, we still kind of use that SSL nomenclature. Uh, uh, on those firewalls, you can turn that on. What happens is it terminates the HTTPS in the, um, from the client. So client asks for whatever website HTTPS. The firewall then intercepts that, terminates it, then checks the traffic, re-encrypts it, and then sends it on to its destination. So um, that can be computationally heavy, especially depending on you know, the uh, amount of user traffic coming on. So again, typically done on the uh, edge perimeter firewall. We're seeing more of it done in the cloud just through that elasticity of CPU. So you don't have to size an extremely large box to be able to handle you know, the, the amount of decryption needed. Uh, if you send it up to a cloud provider, uh, Zscaler and others come to mind, you know, they, they have that feature built in and can do it at scale. Good deal. Well, thanks, Jer. That was insightful. And uh, if you guys want to take a deeper dive into anything security or network, feel free to reach out anytime. Uh, I'm JP with Matrix Networks. If you don't love your network, you probably don't love your job. And I would send you a DTLS packet, but you might not be able to decrypt it. Mm -hmm. uh. Mm-hmm. Uh.